I was in college, mm -hmm. and I think I was a junior. Also, can I get in trouble saying this out loud? Hey, everyone. I'm Morgan Debon, a passionate entrepreneur and life advisor. With The Journey Podcast, you'll discover that success isn't about the destination, it's about the journey. I'm sharing stories of amazing people who've taken control of their lives. Join me on my own journey to discover the secret sauce behind reaching success with permission from no one else. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to The Journey Podcast. I'm here with my good friend, Hope Wiseman. Yes. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We are going to talk all things marijuana, legal, mm -hmm. legalized weed. Legal. <laughs> uh, Hope is a good friend. I'm super excited. We have uh, lots to talk about today. But before we get into it, I wanted to just remind you all to go to morgandebond.com and sign up for my newsletter. If you haven't joined the newsletter, I send recaps of every episode. I also send out free advice, information discount codes when I have them from different partners that I'm working on. So it's just a good way to keep in touch with what's going on in life. And then also while I'm on maternity leave, I'll have a little bit more time to write you all longer emails about all the things that are on my mind, because I'm sure I'm going to be so bored, but so happy, but sitting there like a cow. So expect lots of random emails from me. Hope, how are you today? I am good. Really happy, excited. It's a pretty day here in Maryland. <laughs> beautiful um hope came with a full face beat i came with a full maternity beat so if you're watching this on youtube or on video you know give me some grace look at my upper lip sweat it's so bad right now i can't you know what like while well, i'm gonna look at other interviews i look like a little boy half the time so <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so hope you have a variety of accolades one is that you are the youngest woman owner of a legal dispensary in the country is that right yeah which is i mean honestly probably in the world which is odd to say just because there are not that many countries that have legal cannabis yet wow and not just you got it you guys know me not just black just yeah. woman yeah which is really critical because i feel like sometimes we're like we're the youngest black da -da -da. i'm like okay but also, also gender. <laughs> yeah. It's really critical. There's a lot of different intersections in this industry that I'm hitting, to be honest. You know, like I'm a woman, I'm young, I'm black. I come from a black, you know, a disproportionately impacted area in so many different ways. So, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of things, I guess you could say, against me. If you want to yeah, we define the odds every day, B. That's what we do. All right. <laughs> so, okay. So talk to me about your experience before you started your business. What were you doing before you opened your company? So I was in college. I started my company super young, straight out of school. But I went through school. I was an econ major, minored in organization and business, and I went through all my summers interning at different banks on Wall Street. And I was pursuing a career in investment banking. And I just knew that's what I was going to do. Go back to B school, you know, go work for the buy side. Like, yeah, that's what I, I thought I was going to be doing. <laughs> Didn't we all? <laughs> right. And then so you graduate from college and you're like, it's a no for me. I do not want to be in the financial services industry. And then what happened? So I actually figured that out even before I graduated. So I remember um, I had a full-time offer from J.P. Morgan and I turned it down because I just, I was like, I don't want to move to New York. I don't want to. I was going to school in Atlanta, graduated from Spelman College. Uh, I was cheering for the Falcons at the time too, right? So I like led. Hey, okay, like, come on, cheerleader. I was doing all these different things. And I was <laughs> like, no, I don't want to leave Atlanta. I like it here. My money goes longer. I ended up getting a full-time offer from a, in Atlanta that's no longer in existence. It was SunTrust Robinson Humphrey. And it was awesome. You know, I got to stay in Atlanta and make the same salary as my peers who were at, you know, up in New York and trying to make it off of, you know, I mean, starting salary for an investment banker out of school is probably like $75,000, which is great, you know, straight out of school, but yeah. not in New York. No. So, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so 
Atlanta is an interesting place. Weed is not legal in Atlanta. Right. In Georgia, uh, especially not at that time. So have you always been a smoker? <laughs> so that people ask me that all the time. They're like, do we really smoke weed? Yes. I do. <laughs> um, and yes, I have been for a long time. So, you know, probably way too young. Not what I would recommend now. Now that I actually understand the science behind cannabis. Mm. And which I didn't at first. And now that I do and I understand we all have an endocannabinoid system that, you know, we receive the different chemical compounds in cannabis naturally. We actually make them naturally in our bodies already. Now I get that, you know, for me, it just kind of balanced me out and put me in homeostasis. So that's why I um, was able to still be a high performer and use cannabis from an early age, which it helped me be more open minded and as stigmatized when I started to see the industry developing. I knew, you know, like this was going to be big and I wasn't afraid of it. All right, we're back. I'm in a new location because my Wi-Fi went out. So <laughs> we are in my bedroom now. Anyways, okay, so you were saying that when you were in Atlanta, you... I, you know, I was, I had been exposed to cannabis growing up early. Right. right. So even though I was in Atlanta, cannabis was not legal there. Kind of got interested in the industry, like from a business perspective, because I was working in finance. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, you're tracking emerging industries. You're watching CNBC, uh, Fast Money. You're watching all this stuff all the time. I mean, they have it on the screen at work and you're watching it at home. And around that time, so this is like 2014, you're starting to see legal cannabis pop up everywhere. Mm -hmm the east coast because a lot of the east coast states were just now contemplating medical laws and all of that mm. so you know it's like on the cover of time magazine they're doing documentaries on cnn and and i think i just realized like okay you know i understand economics and this is although it's an emerging industry it's an industry that the demand is already there you know they're projecting all of this demand, but I understand because I've already been in this world, like in, in the real world, in real life, I see how many people use cannabis. All mm -hmm. different people, everybody that from white, black, old, young, everybody, everyone, you know, in different ways. And um, some people recreationally and some people truly medicinally, and it always was. So I think for me, I just realized this industry was probably the demand was even higher than people were projecting and predicting. Mm. I also knew that this would be an industry that would end up, you know, having a few power players eventually and, you know, just kind of other people feeding off of that ecosystem. And I realized that my best chance would be early. You got to get in early. Your level. You know, I knew I was going to get priced out. You know, I'm not independently wealthy. I don't have a lot of these connections and a lot of the things that I knew you needed to be in an industry of this level. Um, so I knew my best bet was going to be ground floor level. And I did not know that the industry was going to prioritize social equity and mm. Black ownership the way that has, or is starting to. I didn't know that it was going to It's attempting to. Yeah, it's attempting. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, my first experience with... Um, with cannabis was I was in high school. I went to an all girls high school okay. and Catholic. So I didn't really, I wasn't really around like drugs. They were more of drinkers. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that was already scandalous to me. Like <laughs> drinking in high school. I was like, oh, you're wild. Mm -hmm. You know, but my brother went to an all boys school, you know, kind of like a peer school that was down the street and they were cannabis users of course and i was like first of all this stinks like what is this that y'all are doing and i never tried it i didn't try cannabis until i was in college mm -hmm. and i think i was a junior also can i get in trouble saying this out loud not anymore it's okay it's like wait a minute <laughs> hold up it's over now you know just like yeah i was maybe i was a sophomore or junior and the guy that I was dating at the time smoked, but not around me. Like, it was just with his boys. And um, I was at the apartment that they all lived in. And one of his friends was, like, on this contraption. 
<laughs> like a bong, probably. A bong. Yes, it was a bong. But at the time, I was like, what is this contraption you're like smoking out of? And he was like, do you want to take a hit? And I was like, no. I, I, first of all, I have things to do. Like, I have class later. I had a pitch competition for our startup that we had founded at the time. And eventually they talked me into it. I was high for two days. I believe it. I believe I it. I pitched and won a pitch competition. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that just goes to show even someone with like no tolerance. I was going to say low tolerance. So like pretty no much tolerance. Low tolerance. You know, you still, you, you did what you had to do. It's not like you was like capacitated. No, but I also remember just like laying in my little twin cot that they give you. The what is it like the extra long twin cot? And being like, I'm having an out of body experience. I am like watching myself float and like looking down on myself and being like, Why did you do this? Never. Why are we still here? Why are you still high? Please go to I, bed. I, most younger women, you know, and that it was the same experience like with my friends. Yeah, I remember like being a uh, year old like trying cannabis weed what we called it at the time yeah weed for the first time and like none of my girlfriends like like they're all like oh I'm so paranoid or like freaking out and I'm like yeah I mean I'm definitely high but like I'm cool you know and they're looking at me they're like you don't look high I'm like I I mean I am but I don't <laughs> you know and like I said now I realize like we literally all have an endocannabinoid system and we just uh what will balance you out and what will balance me out is different so I, I think, you know, that's just what was happening to us even at a young age. And really, yeah. it, you know, we're still growing and developing and stuff. Like, we shouldn't be uh, using psychoactive uh, medicine. That young. If we're, at, at least if we're not treating an actual medicinal need. You know, we right. see like, cannabis work really well. Right. Children that have seizures. But, like, this is a specific dose. You know, it's a dose that's much higher in CBD, which is a non-psychoactive, well, psychoactive, but a non-intoxicating part of cannabis. And then the intoxicating part, there's only a little bit in there, you know? Right. Like, these are the things that we don't understand. And as a young person at 16, I was completely abusing cannabis. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you keep saying this thing, endo what? Endocannabinoids. So okay, explain. Cannabinoids are the different chemical compounds found within like the actual flower. So the bud, if I had one right now, I wish I, I should have next time I'll. Mm -hmm. So the actual bud that you see has like a, a different a genetic makeup. Every strain, that's what you hear, has a different genetic makeup of different cannabinoids. So uh, CBD and THC are definitely the two most popular cannabinoids, but there are like over a hundred different cannabinoids found within the plant. Um, there are also something that we call terpenes, and terpenes can also be found in like plants and fruits and all different things that naturally occur, mm -hmm. and that they're also found in cannabis. And then the effect of, you know, a specific strain will have a specific cannabinoid and terpene profile. And that kind of entourage effect of all of these different chemical compounds are what gives you the feeling to relieve whatever ailment you're experiencing. Mm. As we already have, like I said, an endocannabinoid system that receive, we have CB1 and CB2 receptors that are naturally inside our bodies. They receive these cannabinoids. And what, like, that's why you and I can both, you know, take the same product and have a completely different experience. Mm. Our body just naturally receives them differently. Mm. Um, so that's why, you know, it, cannabis really is a, something of trial and error. There's no, like, specific dose that will work for all. Mm -hmm. um, this is why, you know, a lot of people, you have to journal your cannabis use, especially if you're using it medicinally so that you can figure out, like, okay, what terpenes work well for me in whatever situation? If I'm trying to be uplifted, if I'm trying to relax, if I am mm. trying to, you know, increase my appetite, if I'm trying to suppress my appetite, how does this actually work for me and my body? Then also that factor in tolerance, like it's all types of stuff. Interesting. Okay, so today, if I was a resident of Maryland, mm -hmm. I could go into your retail location mm -hmm. and I could just have at it. So today, if you are over the age of 21 and you have a government issued ID from anywhere in the world, you could shop at my store today. 
Oh, fascinating. So are you a tourist destination? <laughs> we technically, yeah. And you know, it's funny. There are cannabis companies that, you know, that's their thing. If really? Have you, you ever heard about Planet 13 in um, yeah. Vegas? You know, they're full facilities, like 200,000 square feet. I mean, like, it's like Disney World in there. And that's their ploy. You know, they're a tourist destination and that's their thing versus like a store like mine. Um, I'm close to D.C., I'm close to Six Flags. I'm close to uh, the Commanders. I hate saying the Commanders, but the Commanders, the stadium, you know, yeah. so, yeah, you know, we're right off a highway, about 20 minutes from D.C. Do you have signage yet? Do we need a billboard? We can't do billboards. You can't do a billboard? Okay, wait. Not in Maryland. Okay, wait. What? Not in Maryland. That's, you know, that's the other fun part about cannabis. We haven't got to the highly regulated part, but... You know, that's my fun thing. I can't do the normal things that like a business normally could. I have to like work around all this red tape to wow. make it successful. Okay, so first things first. So anyone who has a government ID that's 21 is the age. 21 in Maryland. Mostly and it's 21. Okay. Um, under and... They'll let you get a medical card, and but it's like typically much harder to get a medical card. Right. So I'm 21. I am going to your shop. I'm in Maryland. And I have my government issued ID. Mm -hmm. But does that mean that people who are like, you can be like an ex-con? Yeah. Everything. Okay. We don't hire for anything. Not that. Perfect. So then I walk in and I'm like, what are we doing? Really? Like, how? Yeah. what is that experience like for someone who's coming in to your shop? So, you know, at Marion, Maine, we really pride ourselves on being like the perfect place for first-time users because... Um, we're big on education. Also, we, it's just like a really warm family vibe in there, you know? So like, even if you're like slightly embarrassed or like you feel like, oh, you know, I shouldn't be here. You know, we still have people that are like nervous, you know, and all of that. My staff is like really great at making people feel super comfortable. What happens is you walk in, we're going to take your ID, make sure it's valid and all that good stuff. We're going to check you in. So that's in like our lobby area. And then we have an actual dispensary area. So only people who are checked in over 21 can actually go into the dispensary area. Mm -hmm. Maryland doesn't allow for any product, any live product to be on the floor. It has to be all behind the cash register. Mm -hmm. And I can't show you. So I can't open products and show you. You can't touch it. Smell it. Nothing. You can't smell it beforehand. So that throws off a lot of people mm -hmm. as well. Um, we compensate by, you know, really taking time to teach people about um, terpene and cannabinoid profiles, like I just explained to you, so that we can kind of say, like, look, I know you're used to being able to judge your cannabis and the quality of it based off of uh, how it looks and how it smells. But really, you can look at the, the cannabinoid profile and the terpene profile and be able to get a pretty good gauge. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to see the curing and, you know, if it's dry and all this, all the little fancy stuff that, you know, the, the connoisseurs know. Um, but you start to pick up on what brands do what and all that good stuff. And the laws will change in Maryland eventually and it'll get more like a normal shopping experience. But yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. It's not a situation where you're going to go to your doctor, even mm -hmm. with a medical program. Mm -hmm. so even in a medical program, they call it a recommendation, right? It's not a prescription. You're not going to the doctor and they're not saying like, you need to get Blue Dream and take, you know, roll it and smoke it in a, in a paper and hit it twice and then you'll feel better and hit it four hours. Like that's not happening. In yeah. In fact, because doctors have, you know, their DEA license, a federal license, they can't actually give prescriptions. They are recommending that cannabis could be helpful for whatever ailment you're experiencing. Mm. The bud tender, that's what the industry calls it. I call them experience agents in my store. Mm -hmm. but the bud tender is the one who actually walks you through products and what would work well for you. These are not doctors or nurses either. These mm -hmm. are retail employees. So a lot of it is on, you know, the company to train. Right. And, um, you know, it's a definitely, it's a hard battle. It's something that in the industry, um, I think companies have to really prioritize right now because we know that we have this unique responsibility right? where there's responsible use and that people are like really finding relief, you know, because a lot of people smoke and they don't even know that they're like, it's, it's truly, they're treating a medicinal ailment. Oh, interesting. 
Yeah, I mean, I think I have so many questions, but I got to take off this belly band because I can't breathe. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. This... Oh, we're on free. <laughs> Freedom. Okay, so your business, you know, obviously I'm a CEO and I think about like business models and I'm like, you must be sitting on so much cash. What kind of like protections do you have in place? And not don't tell everybody too much where they can break in or anything like that. But, you know, walk us through like the things that you have to do since it's not federally approved oh. and like everything from banking to security to like what what are the constraints and things? Because you mentioned earlier that you can't even put up a billboard. Right. You know, which is kind of like a sex shop. I'm like, this is not the same. It's not the same. But, you know, I feel like this industry is like a combination of so many different industries, which just makes it, in my opinion, it might be one of the most sophisticated industries and complicated right now. Because it's like a vice industry, but it's also highly regulated, like a pharmaceutical industry. It's, it's you know, a lot of different stuff. And then it's like, you know, 21 plus. But pretty much um, because it's federally illegal still, the so Schedule 1 controlled substance on top of that, it's not even like, you know, we're talking about rescheduling the Schedule 3, which could mean like a whole different thing too. We'll talk about that later. It's not quite as bad. Like in 2014, when I was watching these documentaries, I remember watching these two a young couple that had opened up a dispensary in Colorado and they were like, they had like a stash house for their money. And they were like counting out uh, money for money orders to like pay people, you know, it's not that bad nowadays. So there are state chartered banks and like uh, credit unions that will work with cannabis companies. So we do have banking access. We just pay higher fees because essentially they are doing like SARS, a suspicious activity report, just like oh, yeah. where to go into the bank and deposit you know, $20,000 cash. Mm -hmm. They're essentially doing those types of reports for all of our banking activity to just ensure wow. that it's right. On top of that, you know, we're state licensed. So everything is tracked by the state uh, seed to sale is what they call it, seed to sale tracking. So from the cultivator, from the time it's a seed to the point that it gets to you in a finished product, mm -hmm. track that whole process and they know where it was, how much and all of that good stuff. So you know, like the bank is auditing your sales to make sure the money that comes in the bank is matching up with your sales, wow. all of this different stuff. So um, banking is hard. Yes, there's a lot of cash. However, we do have typical banking access. But I mean, with the fees and because the industry is just so difficult and with all of the red tape around it, you're spending a lot of money. These are heavy cash intensive business Your overhead is high overhead is super high so you know you might do stuff where you might need to be doing you know if you don't have any card processing which is a luxury in cannabis not very many people can process cards right um you know you're sitting on like a lot of cash a week and you might only be able to afford to do one drop a week you know right oh so you might have a hundred thousand dollars in your bank in your we got vault in the bank you got vaults, you got drop safes, you got, yeah. You're like a whole movie. I'm watching Narcos <laughs> right now. I, so full disclosure, y'all, I tried to pitch a show for Hope because I'm like, this is a TV show. <laughs> like, especially because it went from, you know, medical use to now recreational use in Maryland. Nobody wanted to pick it up because it's not brand safe with the advertisers. Yeah. And it pissed me off because I'm like, this is so interesting. You're a freaking icon. Like, if someone writes, like, a history book of cannabis in the United States, like, you're going to have to be in it. Which is crazy to me, but, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I'm okay with it because, like, when you're a pioneer, people throw that word out there, right? Like, that they're pioneering something. And I remember the first time someone called me that, I was like, no, I'm just, you know, doing my thing. But then yeah. when I realized how much I had to do in the dark, right? like, literally no... I had no guidance, you know, yeah. I, what I have done too is made a pathway for other people. I'm like, oh, I really am a pioneer. Yeah. So that means that as a pioneer, I'm not going to get to enjoy all the fruits of my efforts. Facts. Other people. But, but you have first mover advantage and people are going to be like, damn, how did she do it? And the answer will be, well, she did it. She did it. She worked hard. She took a huge leap of faith mm -hmm. and she had first mover advantage. Yeah. 
right? Mm -hmm. It's like no one could duplicate Oprah because that was an era and that was the first mover advantage. No one can duplicate Issa. You know, Issa crushed YouTube and had all of us watching random YouTube web series. Literally the first person I ever did that with. Yeah. And I never really did it again. But it started other people. Now everybody does that. People don't even have TV, like cable anymore. They just watch YouTube videos. Yeah. Yeah. The next generation, they don't, they watch YouTube every night. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm here for the book when it's coming and I would like the rights to your life. So <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm super thankful for all of the different, um, lessons I've been able to learn and all the things I've been able to teach other people. I like had a little stage where I was like mad that like now social equity is a thing in cannabis mm. and it's like. You know, everyone is is on it and every state is prioritizing it in upcoming uh, application processes. And they're trying to make sure that these licenses are going to black and brown communities, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, we all know that half of the black men um, that are in jail, even to this day, is because of petty, low level cannabis charges. So, right. you know, I'm I'm really proud of it. But at the same time, I'm just like. Whew, I wish I had social equity stuff. You know, I, I, the I, same way. Money. I wish I had all of that. I didn't have any of that. <laughs> yeah. When I see people raising money, like black founders complaining about, oh, it's so hard to raise money. I'm like, and I'm like, try you it. all have like 50 funds that are funds for women or funds for black people, mm -hmm. funds for underrepresented minorities. We had zero. None. None. When we like, had to be on par and on point. And as for me, like, I didn't get any funding in the beginning, you know? Like, yeah. I, we started this. So um, for those that don't know, I founded this business with my mother. Mm -hmm. um, and we work side by side every day. We live together now. Like, we live together, work together. Best friend, talking to her all day, all night. We have to, like, remind ourselves, like, turn off the work switch. But my mom and then we have a, a third co-founder who's a longtime family friend, like we bootstrapped this and, and they were like pulling out of their like retirement to do this because nobody would help us and no bank loans, you know, it's federally illegal, no SBA. Wow. Yeah. That's intense. It was. <laughs> okay. So what's the vision? Like, what is your vision for yourself? What is your vision for your business? You know, and I've been like thinking about this so much lately because, uh, you know, I find that when people talk to me, they're first, of course, people put me in like just the cannabis box. Right. Right. But like when I decided to go into this industry, like some people ask me like, oh, is this what you always wanted to do? I'm like, no, I, first off, I didn't know it wasn't a thing <laughs> until right. I had graduated from college for me. So I'm like, absolutely not. This is not what I thought I'd be doing forever, but I love it. Um, and what I've uncovered is like, I'm just a great leader and I probably like could do anything. So like when I think of my long-term vision, I look at cannabis as a like, it's my springboard. It'll probably be like my grounding industry that I was always known for. I will always give back to. But, you know, I really see myself getting into like, VC world, like me being a VC in the future, I want to help make the path easier for women like me and just people like me in general. I'm, I'm not as focused on like it being like black women only or anything like that. Just like people like me in general, especially younger people that are really attempting to build businesses and compete with the best of the best. Some of us really have the capacity to do it. You just need some resources and tools. And most of the time, it's just money. If you're smart enough, all you need is the money. Yeah. Um, so that's what I want to be able to provide people and, and create networks and communities that um, empower young people to build big, big businesses. I don't want us to start small and grow, you know, do that. Most of us can really do this because I look at myself. I'm like, wow, I'm I'm really competitive with some of these big boys. And it's like, there are billion dollar cannabis companies that started their businesses the same year as me. And mm. I'm like, wow, if I had the same resources that that man had, like, Easy. you know, so I, that's, that's where I see me in the future. As far as like, you know, more near term, Maryland, um, like you mentioned, just went adult use and they're licensing more companies. So I'm doing a lot of consulting right now, as well as trying to go as deep as I can in Maryland 
Um, I'm also working to build a national supply chain network because there's no interstate commerce. However, as you build brands, people want to be in multiple states, right? Mm -hmm. Want to be set up for national distribution whenever interstate commerce is allowed, which we mm -hmm. all know it's coming. We just don't know when. So I'm working on, you know, doing that through partnerships and actually uh, acquiring equity in different businesses across the country strategically mm -hmm. so that when the time comes on, you know, I'm, I'm making this up because it's definitely not going to be the name of the brand, but like Hope Weed can be in every state all of a sudden. You're going to just wake up one day and be like, damn, I, I could, it's everywhere, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been spending the past five years building this supply chain network so that when I turn on the switch, I can. Yeah. So yeah, I'm doing a lot of stuff kind of silently in the background right now, and it will all make a lot of sense in the next few years. Yeah, that's what people I think underestimate about um, really successful business owners and businesses is like how much the world that people are seeing of you today is work that you put in three, four years ago. Exactly. You know, and um, I feel that way too when people are like, oh, like Afrotech came out of nowhere. I'm like, girl, this one out of nowhere. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> but dude, this is crazy. You told me about your first Afrotech like at a mall, right? Yeah, or I was at a mall. Yeah. And I'm like, people think you have to like just start out and be like, you know, like not always. And most because us young black women, we didn't have the fund. You didn't have, I don't know how much the budget for Afrotech is, but year one Afrotech was like 300000 Right. Which is like, <laughs> which it's so funny. <laughs> right. It's like uh, 300,000 is one activation. But so like 300,000 is one booth. At after. That's right. That's nothing now. But you know, we, we have to do what we got to do to build up. Even me, I, I remember our store when we first got it. I was like, oh, I want all this extra stuff. My mom looked at me. She said, look, <laughs> we're going to be lean and mean because right. we're not like them and we got to survive. And us being lean is why we're still here. A lot of my um, peers that, you know, yeah, were independent, they're not here anymore. They had to yeah. sell to, to bigger groups. Yeah. Do you think that this generation and the folks coming after us are going to be as um, willing to be as uncomfortable for so long? No. And it's because, you know, we're putting our lives out like way earlier now, too. Right. Like. I mean, I'm not really a big one on it. Like, so everybody that follows me and everything, I definitely, you know, I, I'm sharing stuff and all that, but like, I'm not going to give you a play by play of every single thing I'm doing every right. single time and all that. I think because like, I mean, that's just not natural to me, but these newer kids, it is. And it's like giving them a sense of self-worth. Mm. No, they don't think that they're doing enough unless they're posting it and unless they're actually doing it and then everything has to look perfect and you know the house has to look nice they don't want to show their house unless they got you know the newest kitchen appliances and stuff mm -hmm. it's like look we all are are making it like none of it when that creator moves her camera around behind her, it looks crazy. you know she's probably sitting in the closet uh filming this and make it look like she's in the bahamas who knows you know right i think that like yeah people don't want to be uncomfortable because they feel like they have to show everything and they don't want to show that part you know like yeah don't to see that when someone posts themselves crying everyone's like why would you film yourself crying it's like well, i mean i kind of agree with them i'm like just cry does that have to be on camera i just don't think to pick up the camera when i'm crying because i'm sad <laughs> well, I'm, like, I'm not crying that long so right. i'm not crying long enough to go get the camera come back and and I'm still, probably by the time I got the camera, the tears have stopped. Yeah, I'm like, get it together, girl. girl. Yeah, if you're good enough to film, you could stop crying. <laughs> yeah, interesting. What are other misconceptions that people have? Like, what are the frequently asked questions that, you know, if somebody is seeing you at a conference and they're like, oh, my gosh, it's so interesting. I want to be just like you. Like, what are their questions? You know, main thing is people just really don't understand the regulatory landscape, right? So it's just mainly stuff like, Oh, well, I had this idea to uh, open up this weed store on wheels and I'm going like, to no. all the colleges and do all this stuff. I'm like, eh. depending on your state, like I'm, I'm going to say like 99% of all the states like don't allow for that model. It, like I said, it's, it's mainly the regulatory landscape that I get the most like, eh, that's not quite how it works. Um, I think the other side of it too is I realized that like I kind of live in this like weird bubble where <laughs> everybody is like in the industry or yeah. industry adjacent so they understand things. So even when I'm talking about like how I was talking about the endocannabinoid system and you're like, 
the in you know, and I'm like, oh, let me go back. And I'm, back. people don't even know what CBD really is. Yeah. Or THC. And these are things that you definitely hear all the time. You know, right. I mean, you know, they're like, oh, well, I'm buying CBD from the gas station. And I don't feel anything. And I'm like, well, well, I, I feel my CBD bath bombs. And you, you feel that? Do you I feel, feel like, like I do. You should. I feel like I just feel more zen. Like, do you yeah. ever, um, do you use magnesium? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I feel like after I have magnesium, I'm like, okay, I can tell the nights that I drink magnesium before I go to bed and the nights I don't. And I can tell I have magnesium spray right now for all my little aches and pains. Mm-hmm. If I put magnesium spray, oil spray on my aches and pains, I'm okay. CBD is essentially like that too. It's not um, intoxicating. Like you're not going to, that when people are like, I'm not drunk. drunk. No. You're like drunk high, but like no. you're going to be like, oh, I- that's why I said when I um, I paused when I said it's not psychoactive. I'm like, oh, CBD is psychoactive because it can make you feel more relaxed. And mm. calm and but like, is it regulated in that? Like, can anyone just put out a CBD product basically at this point and just say CBD, even if it's like the smallest just possible? Yep. Um, technically, if it is grown um, by hemp, and I'm saying hemp because at the end of the day, we drew a line in the sand with the cannabis plant and called cannabis that has less than 0.03% THC in it. And then the other cannabis, cannabis, I'm like, it's the same plant. It's the same plant. <laughs> it's the same exact thing. When, when people are walking around morally high talking about some, oh, you know, I only use CBD. Oh. We're like, that's cannabis. It's cannabis. It's the same plant, the same exact plant. It just has... Technically, if it comes from the hemp plant, it has less than 0.03% THC, and it shouldn't be psychoactive in any way. Although they have gotten around what the intention of the farm bill, which is the bill that allowed for this, and um, you know they've manipulated the plant and figured out different ways that you can grow it to give psychoactive components as well that are not Delta 9 THC, which is the regulated industry mm. that I'm in. Oh, that's why you've heard of like Delta 8 stuff or like THCV or something like that. And they're selling it and it actually is getting people high. But those are like manufactured. Think of it as like a chemical version. Of yeah. It. Back so, away from that. So is there organic THC and like organic CBD? There's organic weed. <laughs> In the day, it's, a, it's a plant. Like, <laughs> I know it's just so funny. There I don't know why it makes me laugh, but I'm like, yes, I, I only smoke <laughs> organic cannabis. So you, if you think about how it's grown, like I have a friend. So even in Maryland, home grow is legal. Okay, fair. Right. House, but you can have like two plants, right? And home grow is legal in D.C. too. I have a friend, her fiance is growing right now um, in their apartment, but he uses compost. Like he composts his own soil. And then he's like growing with his own compost and like all this stuff. So that's like true organic. Yeah. Weed. Facts. You know, what you're smoking, those are the flowers. That's the fruit of the weed. Interesting. (laughs) I'm so excited to see how this industry evolves and like how the next generation is like, what do you mean? Like, I'm about to have this test. I'm just going to have a little bit of this just to calm down. Like I had test taking anxiety growing up. Like, well, you know, what if we could have managed these things? Yeah, like a little tincture, you know, again, not everybody, everybody equates cannabis to smoking. There are so many other ways you can consume Gummies. product. Gummies, you can do a tincture, you could put it in juices, you could put it in um, oils and butters and cook with it, like mm-hmm. literally like cook your eggs and have a little bit of THC. You know, you can microdose too. They, people put it in capsules, yeah. tablets, you know, I've seen somebody make like a little sugar pack. You know, like did you can like infuse in your in your. It's drink. about to be a whole innovation. Uh-huh. You're gonna have a whole manufacturing like white label companies, and then all these little influencers are gonna come out with like their own little collagen and CBD mixture. It's gonna be white labeled by Pope Wiseman. The goal, Wiseco white labeling coming soon. You know, like I and I really want to see cannabis more infused in mainstream culture. Yeah. Um, that's so this brand that I just introduced, I really haven't even introduced yet, but I just had like my first event for it called Friends in High Places. Mm-hmm. The whole point of Friends in High Places is essentially we are a creative agency that is infusing cannabis into sports, um, into entertainment, into music, 
um, just mainstream lifestyle brands. Mm -hmm. You want it to be just as normal as like how you pour, you know, a little shot of whiskey after you make a business deal, you know, like cannabis should be that normalized. Um, yeah, wow. Towards it, it's gonna take a while, but nope, let me borrow five dollars, sis. <laughs> uh, right, you I, let me borrow five dollars from you right now, and then I get it back. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We could probably make that happen. We could probably make that happen. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the beautiful things about you know our lives, and you know, we're real friends in real life. Yeah, people who are listening in. Yeah, you know? so <laughs> it's like I think growing up, you always have this vision of like, okay, I need to. Like these are the people that people know, and I need to, I need to get around those get people. around them. And it's that's actually not the right framework. It's really like I need to know the people that are next to me. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's so fun because I can call Hope with questions and situations. Like we, ha I have all types of situations. I'm just like, hey, <laughs> so like this happened and this happened. Is this legal? Is this not legal? Like, what are the things that I need to know, you know, in the same way that she can call me and be like, hey, I'm thinking about, you know, this event or what's the honorarium that people would actually charge for this, uh, you know, and it's it's just such an easier life, I think, being able to have people doing interesting and ambitious things that are outside of your day to day. Doing. Yeah. And for me, like as someone that kind of was like thrusted into like a high level of entrepreneurship kind of unexpectedly, like. I wasn't ready per se. So there's a lot of things that come up that I learn later that I have this like natural ability to, to tackle and stuff, but like, I don't know. So it's nice to be able to pick up the phone and be like, okay, Morgan, I know you've raised a lot of money before. Like, well, does, is this how it's supposed to be? Like, yeah. why, my, my investor is not calling me back. Like, what do I tell my buyer? You know, do I, how do I keep my balls in the air right now when they're yeah. not me? Okay. <laughs> and yeah, you know, like all these things, like I had no guidance on that. So yes, like yeah. it's been amazing to have friends like you to be able to, I mean, we're like guiding each other. No, seriously. And then wait till you have to go mat leave as a CEO. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm so glad you had that. You did it first. <laughs> I literally was looking for all types of resources. I was like, there's nothing, mm -hmm. nothing for this specific oh, wow. category now we have see this is a problem with people like us because now it's like oh business idea i see a void <laughs> no more business no more businesses i can't do another business my matcha business is launching mm -hmm. and um people are like when did you i'm like this has been two years right i've been working on this for Probably two years you, you like came up with it like right now while you've been at home or like no yeah <laughs> how do you have time for this i'm like girl what you mean like We've been working on this. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have an idea and it's like, I can't help it but to come to life, that's where friends in um, high places came from. I was just like, look, I can't help. But like, I go to sleep thinking about like the infusion of cannabis and mainstream culture. Mm -hmm. So I knew like, I, I can't, I got to do it. I got to do it. You got to do it. Mm -hmm. Although there's, there's a timing for everything with your industry, to your point. You know, I remember when there was a media, a weed media company, I think Snoop Dogg tried to do it. Mm hmm um and i remember being like oh it's too early bro too early it's i mean there's early. a few that are like are surviving but they're highly capitalized like a high times you know they've been around too since that that was like the first one back in old school yeah. days you know so they're still around but they done you know they bought dispensaries and they're in retail now well they had to switch their business model like media is not the right business model because you can't media's advertisers are you're not brand safe mm -mm. so you got to build no the brand. money none right. of that right like you could have a media company and let me know if you want to do that. Let me know if you want to do a TV <laughs> on that. Yes. You know, we already got the infrastructure. Don't work harder. Work smarter, guys. So. <laughs> always. Always. <laughs> Anyways, you know, I could kiki with you all day, girl. So, where should people find you on the internet? How can they get in contact with you? And obviously they can be a connoisseur of yeah. your store as well. Of course. Um, okay, so if you are interested in business information about cannabis and just like in general, especially if you are a young woman trying to find your way, definitely follow me on Instagram. My Instagram name is I am Hope So Dope. Um, and people have really been calling me that since I was in Hope So Dope. I need to pause. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> Hope So Dope. Look, everyone's like, you're a grown woman. Change. Keep it. Don't change it. No. no. 
I, I, people have been calling me that since middle school. So <laughs> that's my name. Um, but yeah, so Instagram, I am Hope So Dope. Um, you can also find me online at hopewiseman.co. So I let my name lapse and somebody bought it and is trying to sell it back to me for like 10 grand. Don't let that happen, y'all. Um, we, should, we should buy it. At this point, yes. They knew what they were doing. But yeah, Hope Wiseman Dr. You, know you should let us buy it. You let you should let somebody else buy it for you. I'm yes, that's a great idea. See y'all. Okay, I'm gonna call you about that. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then uh if you're interested in shopping with me, if you're in the DMV area ever, um, check us out at Marion Maine on all socials, website, Marion Maine. My holding company is WiseCo wiseco.ltd if you're looking at you know what else does she own because we own a few other things and in so good mm -hmm. hope i'm so proud of you y'all i hope this was really interesting obviously we could talk about this forever because it's literally a lifetime's worth of work so i encourage you if you're curious about the cannabis world if you have ideas that you feel like you could incorporate cannabis into your life if you've got a dad, a grandma, an auntie wow. in your life who complains about their aches and their pains and they this and they that, you know, consider exploring kids. It is, it's just an alternative option. Alternative Help. option. Alternative. A rec recommendation. Yes. <laughs> All right, Hope, enjoy the day, my friend. Thanks for listening to The Journey Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a review and head to our Instagram and YouTube to leave a comment. I look forward to hearing how this podcast has made an impact on your own journey.